Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. People have been asking what is a DNS server? In my last video, I showed how hubs, switches, routers, and modems create a home network and access to internet. You don't hear much about DNS servers, but they do play an important role on the internet. DNS is short for Domain Name System, sometimes called Name Servers. It's a computer server that contains a database of public IP addresses and their associated host names. They are like the telephone directory. You look up the name of the person or business and it will show the telephone number to call. The DNS server does the same thing for websites and other computers. They resolve or translate host names to IP addresses because computers and network devices don't work well with names when trying to locate each other on the internet. It's far more efficient to use an IP address. In most cases, a primary and a secondary DNS server are configured on either your router, computer, or both whenever you are connected to your internet service provider. There are usually two DNS servers. In case one of them happens to fail, the second is used to resolve host names as they are requested. Every site has their own DNS servers, known as support servers. To see your DNS server settings, find the network connection in the lower right, right click it, then left click network and internet settings. Below network status, click change connection properties. Now scroll down to the bottom and it shows the primary and secondary DNS servers. All inquiries on your network will go to this IP address. To demonstrate the DNS function, let's make a DNS query to find out the IP address for google.com. Open the command prompt by pressing the Windows key and the letter R key on the keyboard to bring up the run box in the lower left part of the screen. Next, type CMD and click OK or press enter. You will see the command prompt open on the left as you see here. At the prompt type NS lookup and press enter. It displays the default name server and its IP address. Now type the host name google.com and press enter. The result shows the default name server as before but it also shows google.com's IP address. You see the name and the computer sees the IP address. Notice the response says non-authoritative answer. This IP address refers to DNS records kept on external DNS servers, which they obtained from the authoritative servers that provided the original source of the data, which I will cover later in this video. To see the actual name servers for the site, type set type equals ns at the prompt and press enter. Now type the site's host name again and press enter. This displays the host name of the site and the name servers for the site. Now type one of the name servers at the prompt and press enter. This will show more about the servers. If you change set type equals mx and press enter, and type in the host name again, it will show the name servers that handle the emails for that site. You can close command prompt when finished. Remembering the host name is a lot easier than remembering its IP address, making the DNS server very handy. When connecting to a website, the process is called forward DNS lookup because the server is resolving the host name into an IP address. You can also perform a reverse DNS lookup where the server resolves an IP address into the host name. This process is often used by network administrators to help troubleshoot network problems. To speed up resolving host names, DNS servers use a cache to store the resolved IP address for a given host name for future requests. It's much like you, how you would write down important numbers in the back of the phone book or adding contacts to your phone. This feature decreases the time it would normally take waiting for the DNS servers to locate the IP address of the host name 
every time it is requested. Imagine having to search someone's phone number in the phone book every time you needed to call them. The cache makes their request much faster. Not every DNS server will have the same data in their cache. The DNS server's cache only stores the data itself had requested. But there are a handful of DNS servers known as authoritative root servers that do contain every registered host name and its IP address that I will cover later in this video. Although DNS servers use cache to speed up requests, your computer also has its own DNS cache called the host file. It contains all the host names and their associated IP addresses for each site your computer has visited. When you type in youtube.com in your web browser, it first checks the local host file on your computer, retrieves the IP address, and connects to the web server. If the host name is not listed in the host file, then the query goes to the default DNS server on the network. It will continue up the DNS hierarchy until a D an answer can be given. When the host name has been resolved into an IP address, it is added to the computer's host file for future reference. The DNS cache or host file have been targeted by virus and malware attacks. Because of the usefulness of the cache, viruses and malware will often make changes to the DNS to redirect the user to an alternate destination often to steal private information. Some change the data to re render the PC useless on the internet, and so forth. This is known as DNS poisoning. The virus or malware must be removed before the DNS cache can be repaired. Once the threat has been eliminated, the cache will need to be flushed to delete the data entries, forcing the system to create a new cache. You can flush the DNS cache by opening the command prompt and typing ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS and press enter. When completed, you should see a message to indicate the task is done. Then restart the PC. Some routers and modems also, also use the DNS cache. To clear their DNS cache, simply unplug the power cord and wait about 30 seconds. Then plug the power cord back in and wait for about two, and a half, two to five minutes as the network reboots. This also works if you're just having intermittent issues loading websites or checking your emails. Flushing the DNS cache and power cycling the network will often correct the problem. There are 13 authoritative DNS servers called root servers that store the complete database of domain names and their associated public IP address. If the DNS servers in your area could not resolve the host name, the query would end up at one of these servers. These top tier DNS servers are named A through M for the first 13 letters of the alphabet. 10 of these servers are located in the United States. One is located in London. One is located in Stockholm. And the other one is, is located in Japan. There are more than 200 million registered domain names in the world, with over 100 million of them being under .com alone. When the DNS was started in the 1980s, there were only six top-level domains, .com, .edu, .gov, .mil, .net, and .org. Since the huge expansion of domain names in 2011, there was a need to better classify the purpose of the domain. You may have heard of bit.biz, .info, and .jobs to name a few. Even country codes like .us for the United States, .ca for Canada, and .uk for the United Kingdom were also added as top-level domains. DNS servers play an important role on the Internet. If you want to see the DNS servers in action, open the command prompt again and type in trace RT space and a host name, then press enter. The results show the hop number, the time in milliseconds it took for the DNS server to respond to each data packet, the name of the DNS server, and its IP address for each hop until it reaches the final destination.
This video showed that what DNS servers are and the role they play on the internet. I am Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.